Hello everyone. Today I am going to tell you one of the part of the CNS examination. I have already covered the higher mental function, meningeal irritation sign, cranial now motor system and the sensory system. Now the next step is cerebellar function assessment. So I will tell you all the details of cerebellar function assessment. The structure which are included in the cerebellum are the cerebellar hemisphere, vermix and the floculo nodular lobe. And the lesion in particular area will lead to the specific cerebellar signs. So what are the signs or what are the tests we will perform for the cerebellar function? We will observe for the eye signs, then we will assess the speech, then there are various coordination movements which we will check and then we have to check the tone and DTR then ultimately gait should be assessed. So in eye signs, child may be having the nystagmus, skew deviation. So in this video, you can see the child is having nystagmoid eyes movement. These are the gauge paretic nystagmus and it is because of the vestibulocerebellar pathway involvement. And this child is not able to sustain the eccentric gaze and child will require the repeated circuits movements to gaze laterally. Sometimes child is having the skew deviation or ocular dysmetria or fluttering movement or opsoclonus and sometimes child is having rebound nystagmus which is a unique feature of the cerebellar diseases in which fast component is in the direction of lateral gauge. In this video, you can see the child is having nystagmoid movement with the skew deviation, which is characteristic of the cerebellar disease. Now, after the eye sign, we should observe the and we should speak to the child so to assess the speech of the child. Child is having the dysarthria, scanning or staccato speech. In this, we have to tell the child to speak some words and we have to observe because of the defect in articulation, child will have the slow, ataxic or slurred or sometimes jerky speech. And it is because of the uh, dyssynergy of the phonation muscles. And when we will tell the child, child will scan the word. Example, if I am going to tell the child to speak the chocolate, child will speak cho ko later so child will scan the word and speak in monosyllable words instead of speaking normally child will break each word into the monosyllables so the characteristic type of the dysarthria in cerebellar disease is scanning or staccato speech now after the assessment of the speech then we should perform the various assessment test for the coordination in upper lip, finger nose, rebound, dysdiadokinesia, look for the intentional tremor, handwriting test. In lower limb, heel shin test, look for the cerebellar ataxia, tandem walking, walk around chair and the toe walking. All these I will tell you the details one by one. So in... Uh, Coordination of movement, we should remember it's not possible to assess the coordination in less than 6 years age group and if the ch uh, child is having muscle power less than grade 3, then again it is not possible to assess. So for the finger nose test, we have to tell the child to touch the tip of the index finger of the examiner and the, then touch the tip of the nose and child is not able to do in cerebellar disease as in this video child is uh, having the intention tremor also having the pass pointing known as dysmetria because child is missing the target dysmetria mean when the child is having error in judging the distance and uh, child is either overshooting the target known as hypermetria or fail to reach the target known as hypometria both are the part of this metria and after the finger nose test we have to perform the rebound test next is the rebound test known as rebound phenomena in which child will keep the arm in shoulder adducted elbow flex position and supinated forearm and we have to hold the child's wrist and we will try to extend the 
forearm and child will resist this movement and we have to suddenly release the uh, our grip over the wrist and a normal uh, child this sudden unloading contraction of the elbow flexure immediately cease and child will stop from hitting himself while in the cerebellar disease there will be patient cannot stop the flexor contraction so a uh, child will either hit the face or over the shoulder it is known as a rebound phenomena which is present in the cerebellar disease in this child can hit himself another test in the upper limb coordination is dysdidocinesia for this we have to tell the child to move the outstretched hands in the supination and the pronation position alternatively so in this video you can see the child is performing this movement or we can say the child to pat the palm of uh, one hand over the palm of another hand alternatively if child is able to perform this test that means child is having the normal coordination in upper limb if child is having movements which are irregular incomplete which is characteristically seen in the cerebellar lesion we have to observe the child for the intention tremors which is characteristic of the cerebellar disease so for this we have to tell the child to outstretch the hands and fingers so in this video you can see child is having the intention tremor when child is keeping the hands outstretched against gravity so this is characteristic of cerebellar disease now for the assessment of coordination in lower limb heel shin test in which we will tell the child to place the heel of one foot on the knee of another leg then push the heel along the tibial shin in the straight line up to the grade 2 and repeat it several time if child is able to perform this that means child is having the normal coordination in lower limb uh, in this video you can see child is able to perform in this video child is not able to perform heel shin test child is even not able to localize the knee and not able to move the heel over the tibial shin it is uh, seen in cerebellar disease or sometime in the sensory ataxia also child is having difficulty in localizing the knee with the heel now we have to assess the child for the gait so in cerebellar ataxia child will have the broad based clumsy unsteady gait i have already explained the detail of the cerebellar ataxia about this gait in this video you can see the child is having broad based clumsy gait it is the cardinal sign of the cerebellar involvement then we have to uh, assess the tandem walking walk around chair in this video you can see the child is walking tandemly and if the child is having any unsteadiness swaying that means child is having cerebellar lesion and generally child will sway toward the side of cerebellar lesion then we will tell the child to perform the toe walking so in this video you can see the child is performing the toe walking if the child is having cerebellar lesion child will not be able to perform the toe walk child will have the more unsteadiness and swaying then we have to assess the tone in cerebellar disease child will have the hypotonia then we have to assess the deep tendon reflex child will have the pendular knee jerk which is characteristic of the cerebellar disease so what are the various cerebellar signs i have already explained in the previous slides child will have the ataxia which is the cardinal sign of the cerebellar disease this synergia means child will not be able to coordinate the muscle contraction for the some particular act label as a dyssynergia it is a essential feature of the cerebellar disease dysmetria child will not be able to judge the distance when reaching to the opposite dysarthria dysdidocinesia not able to perform the alternate movements hypotonia nystagmus pendular knee jerk and staggering gait so according to the involvement of the structure of the cerebellum various clinical manifestations occur in cerebellar hemisphere child will have the limb ataxia or appendicular ataxia in cerebellar vermix involvement child will have the truncal ataxia or gait ataxia 
and in floccular nodular lobe involvement child will have the eye sign nystagmus so this is all about the cerebellar function assessment thank you so much